Struel Peter. When Hume, confronting his worldly compatriots, sought to defend epistemological contemplation, the pure philosophy forever in disrepute among gentlemen, he used the argument, accuracy is, in every case, advantageous to beauty and just reasoning to delicate sentiment. That was itself pragmatic, and yet it contains implicitly and negatively the whole truth about the spirit of practicality. The practical order of life, the practical orders of life, while purporting to benefit man, serve in a profit economy to stunt human qualities, and the further they spread, the more they sever everything tender. For tenderness between people is nothing other than awareness of the possibility of relations without purpose, a solace still glimpsed by those embroiled in purposes, a legacy of old privileges promising a privilege-free condition. The abolition of privilege by bourgeois reason finally abolishes this promise too. If time is money, it seems moral to save time, above all one's own, and such parsimony is excused by consideration for others. One is straightforward. Every sheath interposed between men in their transactions is felt as a disturbance in the functioning of the apparatus, in which they are not only objectively incorporated, but with which they proudly identify themselves. That instead of raising their hats, they greet each other with the, ha the halos of familiar indifference. That instead of letters, they send each other inter-office communications without address or signature, are random symptoms of a sickness of contact. Estrangement shows itself precisely in the elimination of distance between people. For only as long as they abstain from Im importuning one another with giving and taking, discussion and implementation, control and function, is there space enough between them for the delicate connecting filigree of external forms in which alone the internal can crystallize. Reactionaries, like the followers of Young, have noticed something of this. It is, we read in one of G.R. Heyer's Eranos essays, a distinguishing habit of people not yet fully formed by civilization, that a topic may not be directly approached, indeed for some time not even mentioned. Rather, the conversation must move towards its real object as if by itself, in spirals. Instead of this, the straight line is now regarded as the shortest distance between two people, as if they were points. Just as nowadays house walls are cast in one piece, so the mortar between people is replaced by the pressure holding them together. Anything different is simply no longer understood, but appears, if not as a Viennese specialty, with a head waiterly tinge, then as childish, childish trustfulness or an illicit advance. In the form of the new sentences about the health of one's wife that prelude the business discussion over lunch, the utilitarian order has taken over and assimilated even its opposite. The taboo on talking shop and the inability to talk to each other are in reality the same thing, because everything is business. The latter is unmentionable, like rope in hanged man's home. Behind the pseudo-democratic dismantling of ceremony, of old-fashioned courtesy, of the useless conversation suspected, not even unjustly, of being idle gossip, behind the seeming clarification and transparency of human relations that no longer admit anything undefined, naked brutality is ushered in. The direct statement without divagations, hesitations, or reflections that gives the other the facts full in, face, in the face already has the form and timber of the command issued. Under fascism, by the dumb to the silent. Matter of factness between people doing away with all ideological ornamentation between them has already itself become an ideology for treating people as things.